Okay, so, so today in Algebra 2, we're going to look at the second half of Section 4.1, which is the reciprocal function. We're going to start off graphing the reciprocal function. So the reciprocal function is y equals 1 divided by x. This maps every non-zero number to its reciprocal. The domain of a reciprocal function is the number of domain. Those are x's. That's what I plug in for x. If I plug in 0, notice I have 1 divided by 0. I cannot divide by 0 in math. That's undefined. So the reciprocal function's domain is any real number except x cannot equal 0. So in interval notation, that would be negative infinity to 0, union 0 to infinity. The range of a reciprocal function Again, if I can't plug 0 in, I can't get 0 back. So the range, these are my y values. y cannot equal 0. Again, in interval notation, negative infinity to 0, union 0 to infinity. So we're going to graph y equals 1 divided by x. This is the parent function of the reciprocal function. This is the parent. So make a table of values. So let's make a table of values here, x's and y's. We're going to do negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 1, 2, and 3, since I can't get 0. If I plug in negative 3, 1 divided by oh, negative 3, let me see, 1 divided by negative 3 is negative 1 third, so negative 1 third. 1 divided by negative 2, negative 1 half. 1 divided by negative 1, negative 1. 1 divided by 1 is 1. 1 divided by 2, 1 half. 1 divided by 3, 1 third. So I'm going to these points. So over 1, up 1. Over 2, up a half. Over 3, up a third. Negative 1, negative 1. Negative 2, negative 1 half. Negative 3, negative 1 third. So now we're looking at this and we're like, how in the world do we connect these, right? So we have to now talk about a new word, vocabulary word. This is called an asymptote. An asymptote is a line that a graph approaches but will never ever touch or cross. Asymptotes guide the end behavior of a function. Observe the graph of y equals 1 over x as x approaches 0 from both the positive and negative sides. So as x approaches 0, what's happening from the positive side? So when x was 1, my y value was 1. Let's see if x is a half, so a positive 1 half. Okay, let's get closer to 0. So I would have 1 divided by 1 half. Remember, if I'm divided by a fraction, I flip and multiply my fraction. So I end up with 1 divided or 1 times 2, which is 2. So if x is a half, 1 is 2. So as x is approaching 0 from the positive side, my values are actually going to get bigger. Okay? But it's never going to touch the y-axis. As x approaches 0 from the negative side, so let's try negative 1 half. If I plug in negative 1 half, 1 divided by negative 1 half, I would be multiplying by negative 2 over 1. So if x is negative 1 half, y is negative 2. So negative 1 half, negative 2. So my y's will be getting smaller. But again, never touching the y-axis. My numbers are never going to touch the x-axis as either because if x is 5, my y is 1 -fifth. If x is 100, my y is 1 one hundredth. If x is a million, my y is 1 one millionth. But it's going to get very, very, very close to 0, but it's never going to touch it. Right? So the line x equals 0, which is the y-axis is a vertical asymptote. The line y equals 0 is a horizontal asymptote. So I'm going to switch colors here. 
remember that <clears throat> when we were doing our axis of symmetry, when we we're graphing parabolas, we graph those as dotted lines. We graph asymptotes as dotted lines. So I'm going to do a dotted line, x equals zero, and y equals zero, dotted line, as my asymptote. So my graph is going to get very, very close to both of these lines, but never touch it or cross it. So the oh, I want to change color. The graph of my reciprocal function. There's one half of it. The other half looks like this. There's what the graph of the parent the reciprocal function looks like. Okay. Let's graph another one of those. So we're going to graph y equals 10 divided by x. Again, my domain, I can't have x equals 0. So negative infinity to 0, union 0 to infinity. My range, if I can't plug 0 in, I can't get 0 back. So again, negative infinity to 0, union 0 to infinity. My horizontal asymptote, again, would be y equals 0 my vertical asymptote, x equals 0. I can go ahead and plot those as my dotted lines on my graph. I'm going to make a table of values. And I'll pick negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, positive 1, positive 2, positive 3. If I plug in negative 3, I get 10 divided by negative 3, which is negative 10 thirds, which is negative 3 and a third. I plug in negative 2. Negative 10 divided by negative 2 is negative 5. I plug in negative 1. 10 divided by negative 1, negative 10. I plug in positive 1. 10 divided by 1 is 10. Positive 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. Positive 3, 10 divided by 3, so 10 thirds, or 3 and a third. Let's see, if I, if I wanted to keep getting bigger, if I plugged in 5, 10 divided by 5 is 2. I plugged in negative 5, 10 divided by negative 5, negative 2. So let's plot those points. So I've got the point 1, 10, so that's off my graph. 2, 5. 3, 3 and a third, 5, we're at 2, negative direction, so negative 1, negative 10, down here somewhere, negative 2, negative 5, negative 3, negative 3 and a third, negative 5, negative 2, and again, I know that my graph is going to get close to the x and y axis, but never touch it or never cross it. So this is what my graph is going to look like. So y equals 10 divided by x. So now we're going to look at some transformations. So graph translations of the reciprocal function. The nice thing about this, we already know how all of this works. Remember we have... the x minus h moves left, x plus h moves right, the plus k moves up, and minus k moves the graph down. And again, all from the parent function. Our parent is y equals 1 over x. So I look at g of x equals 1 divided by x minus 3, all of that plus 2. If I want to find my domain, I cannot have 0 in my denominator. So I take whatever my denominator is, x minus 3, and I say it cannot equal 0. So I get x cannot equal 3. So this time, 3 is the only number that I cannot plug in for x. So my domain, negative infinity to 3, union 3 to infinity. My range, 
Remember that our asymptote originally was at zero, but now it got moved up. This I have this plus two. So that number, the k, affects my range. So my range is going to be negative infinity to two, union two to infinity. My horizontal and vertical asymptotes are based off of h and k. So my horizontal asymptote is y equals whatever number is being added or subtracted out here. So y equals two. My vertical asymptote is whatever number is not included in my domain, so x equals 3. Do not know where the green lines are coming from. I apologize. So I'm going to go ahead and graph those. So x equals positive 3, vertical line over here. y equals positive 2, horizontal line. My parent function, x, y, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 1, 2, and 3. I know is that negative 1 third, negative 1 half, negative 1, 1 third, 1 half, or sorry, not 1 third there. That's positive 1. 1 half, 1 third. Just like when we were doing all of our other transformations, x minus 3 comes out opposite, becomes x plus 3. Plus 2 at the end, y plus 2. So I take each of these points, all of my x's, I'm going to add 3 to them. So negative 3 plus 3, 0. Negative 2 plus 3, 1. Negative 1 plus 3, 2. 1 plus 3, 4. 2 plus 3, 5, 3 plus 3, 6. Then all of our y values add 2, so negative 1 third plus 2 is 1 and 2 thirds. Negative 1 half plus 2, 1 and a half. Negative 1 plus 2 is 3. 1 plus 2, or, sorry, negative 1 plus 2, I added that wrong. Erase. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. One plus 2 is 3. A half plus 2, 2 and a half. A third plus 2, 2 and a third. I plot these points. So 0, and I'm at 1 and 2 thirds. Let's do this in a different color than my asymptote. Over 1, up 1 and a half. Over 2, up 1. Over 4, up 3. Over 5, up 2 and a half. 6, 2 and a third. And again, my asymptotes determine my end behavior. I know that my graph is going to get close to them, but not touch. So this direction is getting close here. Go down like this. This one, it's getting close this way. and not touch. So there's the graph of that one. We're going to look at one more of these. So g of x equals 1 over x plus 2, all of that minus 4. Remember my horizontal asymptote is based off of what's added or subtracted. So minus 4. So my horizontal asymptote, y equals negative 4. I can find my domain. I take what was in the denominator, x plus 2, I say it cannot equal 0. So I get x cannot equal negative 2. So my domain, negative infinity to negative 2, union negative 2 to infinity. My range, okay, is that negative 4. So negative infinity to negative 4, union negative 4 to infinity. My vertical asymptote was what was not included in my domain, so x equals negative 2. So I'm going to go ahead and plot those. So y equals negative 4 for horizontal asymptote. x equals negative 2, my vertical asymptote. Again, I'm going to make the xy table of my parent function. So this was the negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 1, 2, and 3. 
So negative one third, negative one half, negative one, positive one, one half, and one third. So now my new one, the transformations, it says x plus two, so that becomes x minus two here, y minus four. I'm going to take and I'm going to subtract two from all of my x values. So negative three minus two, negative five. Negative two minus two, negative four. Negative one minus two, negative three. One minus two, negative one. Two minus two, zero. Three minus two, one. Now I'm going to subtract four from all of these. So negative one third minus four puts me at negative four and a third. Negative one half minus four, negative four and a half. Negative one minus four, negative five. One minus four, negative three. One half minus four, negative three and a half. One third minus four, negative three and two thirds. So let's plot these. So negative five, negative four and a third. Negative four, negative four and a half. Negative three, negative five. Negative one, negative three, zero, three and a half, negative one, negative three and two thirds. So again, my asymptotes determine my end behavior. So this graph, this on this side, down here, it's going to look like this. So that's all there is to graphing a reciprocal function. We saw the parent function, the transformations work just like the transformations of everything else we have graphed. My domain depends on the denominator. My range depends on what number is being added or subtracted to the function. My horizontal asymptote, again, goes off of my range or what's being added or subtracted to the function. My vertical asymptote goes off of my domain or what is in the denominator of my reciprocal function. Our homework tonight will be again in Envision 4.1 Day 2.